We can do our walk around video on the schematic. One and two are our steering cylinders. So left and right side of the machine is in the articulation joint. There is the steering cylinder. And we've also got our uh, lock link here. If we want to put the uh, steering lock in. This doesn't show up on the hydraulic schematic, but we can uh, lock this frame. If we want to test our uh, maximum pressure when we're steering, we can do it against this lock. This piece of steel is strong enough to do that. So now the machine is a little safer for testing. If someone's going to be in this area when the machine's running, we can be assured it's not going to steer. You want to remember to pull that lock link out when you're done testing. So that was our steering cylinders. They're fed from the uh, steering control valve or hand metering unit. And it is under here. I'll just point to it. So there's our uh, steering hand metering unit underneath the cab. Same steering control valves we looked at before Eaton brand. So that is number three. Four and five. Four is the uh, pressure reducing valve where steering pressure becomes pilot pressure and five is the accumulator so I won't show you those because they have to take some tin wear off but you'll take this cover off and once you get this plate off underneath the right side of the cab you'll see the accumulator laying in there and just over the frame inside right about here on the other side of the frame is that pressure reducing valve and it's at that pressure reducing valve where we'll install our pressure gauge for checking pilot and also when we're checking steering pressure We'll check steering pressure upstream. We'll check pilot pressure downstream. So there's two, two pressure taps on that valve. Number six. Number six is a uh, coupler cylinder. It looks like a balanced cylinder, but it's not. There's actually two separate rods and pistons in there. Oil comes in between and drives the two pistons out. And that pushes two pins uh, out hydraulically to lock an attachment on here uh, so there's a, a bore where we can lock that on but that cylinder is actually underneath this cover so we can't lay eyes on it without taking that cover off but you can see the lines running in there it shows up on this schematic as part of our main DCV but in reality on our IT28 this is no longer part of the main DCV. Instead of having four spools in the main directional control valve, we've only got three because that, uh, that valve is now here. It's solenoid operated valve and it's run from the steering system. So we've got wires coming to these solenoids and there's now a switch in the cab for your attachment coupler. So on this machine doesn't match the schematic because it's got this button with a little safety lock on it for uncoupling and coupling, locking the pins with an electric switch. Well, I'm going past the door here. I'll just show you the trick to release the, uh, if the doors are latched in the open position and you want to close the door, this is the release button. It can be tricky to find that on these cat wheel loaders of this generation so seven we don't have seven on these earlier machines where the coupler was part of the implement hydraulics they had a little safety shutoff valve that you could use to lock the oil in between those two coupled cylinders so they wouldn't drift back and you wouldn't have your implement fall off but now that we've gone to an electrically controlled valve off the steering we don't need that uh, number eight Appears to be the uh, two tilt cylinders. So there's our tilt cylinders. This machine's got the parallelogram front linkage because it's an IT. So there is two bucket tilt cylinders here fed from this section of the valve. Uh, number nine is our two lift cylinders. So lift cylinders are here on the machine, pinned between here. And there, lifting the loader frame. So that's nine. Ten is a solenoid for ride control, and eleven is ride control accumulators. These double hash lines here indicate that these are optional attachments on the CAT schematic, and uh, we do not have this option on this wheel loader, so we won't find those components. 
Number 12, 12 is the uh, brake valve. So the, the full hydraulic brakes on this machine, the brake is fed from uh, the hydraulic system. The lines just kind of end here on the schematic where the lines would go into the axles because we've got inboard brakes inside the front and rear axles of this machine. But you can see the supply to the brake valve. So that brake valve will go around the other side of the cab here. And we've got our brake pedals, one left and one right through the linkage. They operate the brake valve, which is under here. Here's our brake valve. So there's actually two valves in there because we've got independent uh, split front and rear brakes. So front axle and rear axle braking. When you look at that control valve symbol, you see that the operator steps on the pedal. They push on one valve and then through a linkage and spring assembly, they push on the second valve. So there's two independent brake valves with two independent supplies going to front and rear axle. And then our two brake accumulators teed into the supply to that brake valve is number 14. So we're skipping 13, we'll come back to that, but I just want to cover the brake system. So 14s are brake accumulators. So to get to those, open this door, and then to access the accumulators, just grab this panel, and give it a good pull towards you. It's just on a little rubber uh, coupling there. And there's our two brake system accumulators. So they're being fed from the brake and fan pump. That's this pump here driven off the front, front timing gears of the engine. That gear pump feeds the brake accumulators via an accumulator charging valve that's mounted on the back of the pump. That feeds the accumulators and up to that brake valve underneath the cab. So go back over to uh, 13 and 15 here to get those out of the way. 13 and 15 we do not have on this machine. Those are optional components of a supplemental steering system. We saw that on the G976 grader where we have an electric motor driving a pump for emergency steering. This machine, again, we see those double hash lines indicating this is an optional attachment. Uh, that's the pump and electric motor. That's the relief valve that comes as a part of that option if equipped. So we don't have these, 13 and 15 aren't here. 16. Uh, let's finish the brakes, we'll come back to that. So we looked at the brake control valve, the brake accumulators. There's the brake pump we just looked at. We'll go back over there and have a look at the accumulator charging valve that's part of that system that feeds the accumulators and the brake control. And then there's also a priority valve here that allows that brake pump, once the brake system is satisfied, it allows that pump to feed the fan motor. So let's go have a look at those. We'll be a little bit out of order in our numbers. Put shine the light in here. There's our accumulator charging valve mounted on right on the back of the brake pump. There is a uh, brake pressure warning sensor screwed in here. And where you're going to check your brake pressures on this machine is on a pressure tap right here on the back of the accumulator charging valve. So we want to check our, we get to the test for checking cut in, cut out pressures, etc. for the brakes. It's that pressure tap. And then again, the priority valve, once the brake system's satisfied, the priority valve will then let oil come down this hose, which comes through to feed our hydraulic fan motor. So there's another example of a priority valve. We're used to seeing priority valves give priority to steering over implements. This one gives priority to brakes over fan. So this valve has sort of two main functions inside. One is a priority valve. Two, it's also an accumulator charging valve. It's gonna manage the pressure in the brake accumulators with a cut in pressure and a cut out pressure. After the oil leaves the fan motor, uh, as I mentioned in lecture, that's where it goes to the oil cooler. And then after the oil flows through this radiator type oil cooler, it's mounted inside here. So that's our hydraulic radiator type oil cooler. Once the oil comes back from that, cool, it comes back, cool oil comes out of this hose and goes through the filter and back into the hydraulic tank. 
So that was uh, our accumulator charging valve, our priority valve section of that combination valve. Accumulator charging valve is, there are these parts. Again, our accumulator is the brake system. There's our fan motor. Fan motor has a relief valve in it, cartridge valve screwed into it, controlling uh, maximum fan pressure. If the pressure gets too high, it'll bypass the fan motor through that relief. And again, after the oil leaves the fan motor, it goes through a cooler, through a filter, and back into the tank. So we just follow those lines. So we've covered off uh, 26, 27, and 28, and 25. So we got a little bit ahead of ourselves in numbering, but we'll remember that we got those out of the way. Number 19 is our pump assembly. It's both a vein pump for implements and an axial piston pump for steering. So there's two pumps together. You can see there's one common housing around them. Those are, it's a Vickers pump. They sell it as a combination vein and piston pump. So they're both sort of in a common housing. And we'll have to take this panel off the side of the cab to get in here. We'll see you over this side of the, the frame here or up in this hole. Uh, driven off the transmission, the pumps are up in this area. So we'll have to remove this tinware off of this side to get to those. The, uh, so that was 16. 17 is pointing to the whole directional control valve. Again, this one on the schematic shows four spools. Ours only has three because it doesn't have the coupler in it. But that control valve is behind this plate. It's mounted over the front axle on the machine in the front frame. You can also see it through here. If you look forward, you can see the control valve up in there. So just shedding some light on that. You can see the control valve. If you wanted to access it to uh, adjust the relief, etc., you would simply take four bolts under that cover and you can get to the control valve right there. So 20 is our uh, pilot shutoff valve, our activation valve, and then 21, 22, 23, 24. We've only got three pilot controls, they're showing four because of the coupler. Uh, so pilot shutoff valve. Right here by the operator's heel near the floor. So you want to make sure this is all the way down because there's an electric switch in there that also uh, allows the uh, tilt kick out to work. So that's your activation valve. If it's down, you have pilot oil sent to the controls. We've got a two axis joystick for lift and tilt, a single axis joystick for auxiliary. And again, coupler is now a switch on this serial number of machine. So the one component that I've skipped over is 16. 16, if you follow it, the line out of the vein pump, the implement pump, it comes to this block 16, this rectangle, and then the oil flows up to the main DCV. So that is just a manifold, and that manifold is on the front side of the transmission here. It's actually that block right there. So this steel line coming into that block is coming down from the vein pump, and then there's a hose that runs off the front of this block, and Obviously it has to be a flexible hose because it's going through the articulation joint and up front to the directional control valve. Uh, relevant that we find this block because on top of this block is the pressure tap. Instead of making you take these panels off if you just wanted to check your uh, pump discharge pressure, they've put a pressure tap in that manifold where the steel line comes in. They've just got an opening to a pressure tap on top. So for checking our implement pressure when we're doing lift and tilt, uh, testing, testing our main relief for implements. We'll put our gauge on that block at the front of the transmission in there just by the parking brake. So that takes care of all the numbers on the schematic. I've also put some letters. A is our main relief, that's part of the uh, main DCV. Uh, B is one of the port reliefs. There's several port reliefs shown across here. That's one of the port reliefs. This one happens to be in the rod end of the tilt circuit so but we also got one in the head end of the tilt circuit we've also got them in both uh, sides of the attachment circuit 
Uh, again, the coupler's not part of this system anymore. It's part of steering now. Uh, and what's uh, also evident is we don't have port reliefs in the lift circuit, but we do have C, which is an anti-cavitation valve. So these port reliefs uh, at B are actually all combination port relief and anti-cav valves. Um, this one, because we don't have port release, we still need an anti-cavitation check valve for the rod end of the lift cylinders. Uh, so if we lower the loader frame when the engine's at low idle and we lower it very quickly, oil can come in from the tank and make break a vacuum or make up a void. Or if we lower the implements to the ground when the engine's shut off. And the way we would lower implements to the ground if the engine's shut off, we do have that pilot system accumulator storing pilot pressure for us. But if we've lost pilot pressure and we can't start the engine, D is actually a mechanical valve that'll let us let oil out of, through an orifice, through the head end of the lift cylinder. So there's actually a passage here, similar to the lift arm bypass you might find in a Bobcat skid steer that we've talked about. But this valve is actually still manually operated. It's gonna let oil out to drain or out to tank, out the drain passage of the DCV. But it's actually that valve my memory serves me correctly, is in the articulation joint area here. Yeah, it's right there. So that valve is right here. You just put a wrench on that square and uh, turn that. And this line is connected to the head end of the lift circuit uh, of the loader cylinders, loader lift cylinders at the DCV. A hose on the other side goes back to tank. So when you open that, you're gonna let your loader frame down. Uh, and then you've got to remember to close that again. So if you recall, Bobcat called that red-handled valve in the cab, they called that the lift arm bypass valve. Caterpillar calls this a dead engine lowering valve. But same function, it's just not as handy and not as obvious to uh, an operator. Uh, e as in Edward on the schematic. Uh, where is he? So there's E. E is one of our load check valves. It's an open center, old fashioned open center control valve. So load check, load check, load check, load check. This one that's circled is load check for the uh, bucket tilt function. But it's an open center valve. It's also, you can see a series valve. There's no parallel flow path. Spools closer to the pump inlet have priority for hydraulic flow. So tilt will have priority over lift on a wheel loader. So load checks. And then F is in Frank, uh, port relief and anti-cav valve in the uh, steering hand metering unit. So you're not going to get to that on the machine because you'd have to take the, you know, the steering valve down from the machine and it's on the top side of that hand metering unit. But you can see they exist on the schematic. And they are cross port design, much like you might find in hydrostatic drives where they don't blow oil back to tank. They actually crisscross from one side of the circuit to the other. So if the pressure, pressure spike happens in this line, the head end of this cylinder, rod end of this cylinder, it'll blow across the relief to this side of the circuit to relieve that pressure spike. 